大家好 ，Welcome back to Edupia World Videos. We have finally finished lesson twenty series, and now we are going into lesson thirty series. But this series will be quite short because I'll be wrapping up the whole lesson very shortly. But before we finish, I want you to understand a bit about Tang poetry. Okay. It's because Tang poetry is very popular among Chinese. Every single person knows Tang poetry. Okay, as children, we have to memorize Tang poetry, so it's a very important part of Chinese culture. All right, I'll explain to you in a second what it is. All right, so this lesson outline is for you to understand the format and structure of poems from Tang Dynasty. Okay, I'll explain more about the dynasty later. And in this lesson, I will introduce you one poems from Tang Dynasty, and so that you can appreciate the poetry. Okay, the beauty of poetry and why it is still exists today. Okay, so let me just introduce you a bit about Tang Dynasty. It is one of the many dynasties back in ancient China. So it spans between six hundred eighteen to nine hundred and seven after dominant, and it's ruled by the Li's family. So Li is the family who is ruling the country, and the emperors during this period, the surname is Li. Okay, and it is the golden age of Chinese poetry. A lot of poets who are very famous were active during this period. Okay, so many poets created quality poems that are still being widely recited today. Okay, so that's why I would say like even every child has to memorize one poem. Okay, and if you can memorize a lot, then you will be praised. Okay, so the examples of poets they are Li Bai. Okay, you should know this word already. The name is very simple, but this person is. A very famous one, the most famous poet of from Tang Dynasty. Okay, and his poem style is more of romanticism, usually talking about how beautiful things are, having memories of the past, and talking about friendships, etc. So his poem is more of Romanticism, okay, and I know it's different from the Western notion of romanticism. But for Li Bai, his work is usually sentiments based, okay. And the next poet is Du Fu, okay. Du Fu served as a ministry in the palace, so his poems is more of realism, okay. He usually talks about how. The country is being wrecked, and how things gone wrong, and how he wishes things can go better, and so his poem reflected the realistic life, like saying how the poor is starving from death while the rich they have wasted their food. Okay, so Du Fu, I know you don't know these two words here, but it is quite. A good idea to know this poet. Okay, so these two persons they have very different poetry style. Okay, so one is more of romanticism and the other one is more of realism. Okay, and there are other poets with different styles as well. Okay, so they include those、um, like writing about ghosts and fairies. And many different styles of poems can be written by many different poets. Okay, and that included some religious beliefs as well. For example, Buddhism and Buddha. There are people, there are poets who focus on that area of poem poetry. Okay, so for Tang poetry, it is usually five to seven words in a single verse. Okay, I'll explain to you how it works. It it makes more sense as you look at the poem itself. Okay, and it has it has four or eight verses in a poem. So basically, it is either a short one or double the size. Okay, it follows a very strict 
rim scheme and I'll show you later it is very much like the nursery song okay it's almost every single verses ends with a same rhyme okay the beauty of the poem lies in the symmetry between verses okay so it can follow some strict tonal rule or classes of characters okay like you will understand more as i show the example to you okay but this is just to give you a simple idea of a concept of how tongue poetry works okay and just before i get into it i want to introduce you to tonal rule again okay tonal rule the first and second is known as ping okay and the third and fourth known as zhe okay it doesn't make sense now but i will explain to you why i introduced this thing to you okay just remember first and second known known as ping and third and fourth known as zhe and of course this ping and zhe is only applicable to poems from the ancient china so the example poem i got here is Deng Guan Chue Lou, Ascending White Stock Tower okay it is written by Wang Zhihuan okay it is quite a famous poem that encourages people and motivates people okay so i'll read it out to you so first verse Bai Ri Yi Shan Jin Huang He Ru Hai Liu Yu Qiong Qian Li Mu Geng Shang Yi Cheng Lou okay now you realize that so every single verse is five and in some poems it is seven okay so if it's seven every single verse would be seven if it's five like this one every single verse will be five so in this poem it has four verses okay if it is longer it will have double the um the word count which is eight verses all right and it is following a strict tonal rule okay it is following a very strict rhyme okay I know that Liu and Lo doesn't really matches each other but because in modern Chinese it has changes through time the pronunciation has changes to through time but back when it was in ancient China it would have the same rhyme okay if you if you speak cantonese that you will know that these two words liu and lo they sound almost the same okay i'm a cantonese speaker so we can say liu is lao and lo is also lao okay so basically they rhyme if it's pronounced in ancient time and let's look at the tonal rule Okay, remember the first and second it's known as ping and third and fourth is known as zhe. Okay, so this one is the second tone, so it's known as ping, and this one zhe ping ping zhe. Okay, I've written it here. The next one ping ping zhe zhe ping. Okay, so now you can see it has symmetrical rule. Okay, so if the first two words is zhe, then the second one is ping, and the rest is also the same. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Zhe ping, ping, zhe, zhe. Okay, okay, and then the last one. There are some changes there because again, it has some changes throughout time. Okay, the pronunciation we have today is different from what we had in the past so that's why it has a bit of inconsistency but when it's pronounced when it is in ancient time it makes perfect sense all right so you can see these two verses they are symmetrical in terms of tonal rule okay and these two as well as you can see and the symmetric and the symmetry doesn't only work in tonal rules but it also works within category of things okay so for example if you since you have learned about the names of 
colors so you can see that the first word here is bai so bai is white if you can remember and the second one the second one the first the second was the first word is huang huang is yellow so it is symmetrical based on the category of things okay and the next one also it is item so ru is the sun in the sky and the second word he is actually river and it's a river on the ground so you can see that the words they are symmetrical based on its meaning and category okay i will pause this for now so we can get into the vocabulary so you can appreciate it more all right so let me introduce you to the title of this poem so it's dong guan chue lou okay dong as you have already learned it's it's to ascend as you are going to a plane you are saying dong ji which is to board okay so dong it means ascend in this context okay lou is floor as you have learned before but in here we are referring to the building or a tower okay and the rest day is guan chue is just the name of the tower okay it's white stock tower okay so the new word here is stock uh, is guan guan is stock crane okay this is the pinyin guan and the radical is this one what's on the right and the arrangement is horizontal as you can see that's left and right components okay left component is a bit complex but you can see it has the vertical arrangement top middle and bottom and even the middle component it has left and right components too okay let's look at how to write guan e er san si 五六七八九十十一十二十三十四十五十六十七十八十九二十二十一二十二。Okay, twenty-two strokes for this word. One. The next word is chue. Chue in general it can mean bird, but in a more common sense it is, it is known as sparrow a sparrow. Okay? So if you want to say sparrow, you can say ma chue. Okay? Ma is the same word as nom ma ma fan ma chue. Okay? This is the pinyin chue and the radical is this one, what's at the bottom there, so the arrangement is vertical. Let's look at how to write chue. E, er, san, si, wu, liu, qi, ba, jiu, shi, shi, yi. Okay, 11 strokes for this word, chue. Okay, so we are going to the first verse of the poem. Okay, it is bai ri yi shan jing. Okay. The meaning is the sun, the white sun sets against the mountain. Okay, so there are only two new words here. So, yi, it means according to or rely. Okay, but in this context, it's more of against. Okay, it is used as in the ancient term. So, it has some different meaning to the modern terms we have. Okay, so that's why studying ancient texts like if you are interested the art of war it is not as simple as reading a chinese text okay you have to understand what the cultural background is and how ancient text works okay so this is the pinyin yi and the radical is this one what's on the left there the arrangement is horizontal because you have left and right components this is how you write yi yi 二三四五六七八，eight strokes for this word. Yi. Okay. The next word is Jin. Jin means end or finished. Okay. This is the pinyin Jin, and the radical is this one. The arrangement is simple. Let's look at how to write Jin. Yi. 
二三四五六 ，Okay, six rocks for this word. 进 So you can see 白日依山尽 It means the white sun sets against the mountain. Okay, so it sounds a bit weird if you want to say it in modern term, but because it is in a poem and it's written against the ancient Chinese language, so it makes perfect sense for them to understand what this is. Okay, it is a bit difficult, but if you can try to guess what the meaning is, you can feel that this is a very Romantic and also a lot of environment, a lot of descriptions of the surroundings that is incorporated into the poem. So this is the kind of beauty of Tang Dynasty poem that you can appreciate. Okay, so in modern sense, it's like the sun, the white sun, is finishing against the mountain, but. If you imagine it in a way, it means the sun sets against the mountain. All right, and the second verse is symmetrical to this. So, 黄河入海流 it means the yellow river flows into the sea. Okay, so as you are ascending the white, you can see a great scenery lies before you. So. What the poet saw is the white sun set against the mountain, and the yellow river flows into the sea. Okay, he is describing the scenery that he saw when he is ascending the white stock tower. Okay, it is a real tower with three floors, and it is still exists in one of the province in China. Okay. Let's get back to this first, okay, and learn the new words, okay. So the new word here is he. He, as I said, means river. This is the pinyin he, and the radical is this one. What's on the left there? The arrangement is horizontal, because you have left and right components. Let's look at how to write he. 一、二、三、四、五、六。七八 okay, eight strokes in this word. Her. The next word is ru. Ru means enter or getting into. Okay, it makes sense, right? Because the two meaning is really similar. This is the pinyin ru, and the radical is itself. So the arrangement is simple. Okay, so you have learned that the exit is chu ko. So if you wanna say The entrance, you can say 入口 okay. 出 and 入 they are directly opposite against each other. All right, this is how you write 入 Very simple, just 一、二 two strokes. Okay. The next new word is 流流 means flow, or it can also be used as a noun, which means a stream. Okay, this is the pinyin 流 and the radical is this one. Okay, so this word is used for water. So last slide we look at river, and it's made of water, so it has this radical. So when it comes to flow, it also involves liquid or water. So that's why we are using this radical here. The arrangement is horizontal because you can see the left and right components. Let's look at how to write 流一、二、三、四、五、六、七、八、九、十 Okay, ten strokes for this word 流 Let's look at the verse itself. So 黄河 is yellow river. Should be intuitive enough. 入海流 is like into the sea flows. So in another words, it's just to mean the yellow river flows into the sea. Okay, this one is relatively easy. All right, the next verse, the third verse, 欲穷千里目 it means to have a thousand mile view. Okay, there's only two new words here. 
So the first word is you. You is desire or want. Okay, so basically it means the same. This is the pinyin you, and the radical is this one. What's on the right? The arrangement is horizontal because you can see the left and right components. Let's look at how to write you. E, R, San, Si, Wu, Liu, Qi, Ba, Jiu, Shi, Shi Yi. Okay, 11 strokes for this word, Yu. The next word is Chong. Chong means poor or end. Okay, I will explain to you in a second why we are using this word in this verse. Alright, this is the pinyin Chong. And the radical is this one. What's on top there? The arrangement is vertical. Okay, let's look at how to write Chong. Yi, er, san, si, wu, liu, qi. Okay, seven strokes for this word, Chong. Okay, I'll explain what this verse means. So, yu chong qian li mu is to have a thousand mile wheel. So, qian li mu should be really obvious okay the next new word is mu okay mu means eyes and it has other meanings but i'll leave it for now this is the pinyin mu okay the radical is itself so the arrangement is simple let's look at how to write mu e er san si wu okay five strokes for this word mu so let's look at how this verse works. So qian li mu is qian li. You have known that it means thousand mile, okay? And mu is the eyes, or it means the view, okay? So yu is like wanting, chong. It has the meaning of n. So if you really want to like further your view to the thousand mile, okay? Because as you are going further, you are going to the end, right? So this has such a meaning. So yu chong qian li mu is like if you want to have a thousand mile view. Okay, so let's go to the next words and see what he suggests. 更上一层楼. Okay, it means go up another floor. Okay, so the new word here is 更. 更 is more or further. Okay, this is the pinyin 更. And the radical is this one. The arrangement is simple. Let's look at how to write Gong. Yi, er, san, si, wu, liu, qi. Okay, seven strokes for this word, Gong. So the way to use this word in modern context is sometimes you can say, use, say superlative words with this word. Okay? So instead of saying 比较, you can say 更. So for example, if you want to say better, you can say 比较好, or you can say 更好. Okay? So for example, if you want to say this is more beautiful, you can either say 这个比较好, or 这个更好. Make sense? Alright, the next new word is 层. 层 means layer of floor. Okay, this is the pinyin and this is the radical. And the arrangement is enclosure because the radical is wrapping what's inside this. Let's look at how to write 层. 一, 二, 三, 四, 五, 六, 七. Okay, seven strokes for this word, 层. Okay, so to say 更上一层楼 is just to go up another floor. So 更 is like more up. So it's like just go up another floor. 一层楼 is a floor. Okay. So the whole thing is to tell you that to have a thousand mile view, you go up another floor. You go up another floor. Okay. So it is a kind of motivating speech for everyone. Because if you want to have a better results or to have a greater view, to have a greater vision, you have to work for another floor. Okay? You have to do the work 
and go up another floor to have a better view or better results. Alright? So, if we go back to the poem that we have, so you can see it is a very symmetrical poem. Okay? The first word is symmetrical to the second because the first word is about color. The second one is about the scenery, the sun and the river. And the third one is more of the preposition, right? Because this is against and this is into. And the fourth one is also about the scenery. You have the mountain, which is like the top of things, and the sea. Okay, mountain and the sea, they are symmetrical to each other. Alright, one is tall, one is the lower. And then the last word is the verb. Okay, this one means ends, this one means flows. And the third and fourth words is also symmetrical. Okay, so this one is about the first two words here. The four words here, they are the verbs. The third word here is about numbers. So, qian, thousand, yi, one. Okay? And the fourth one is more about the quantifier. Qian li mu is to say a thousand mile view. Okay? So, like how big the view is thousand mile so this one is regarded as a quantifier so that's this okay the layer of the floor okay the last one you can see it is about the noun so now you can appreciate how all all of these comes together as a poem all right so what have you learned this sen in this lesson is the vocabulary. So you have learned how to say rely against and river, etc. And also you have learned Tang poetry, the background, some famous poets, the style of the poets, and the structure of the poems, and know how to appreciate the Tang poets poetry because it follows a strict rhyme rule and also the tonal rule and also having the beauty of symmetry as I have explained just now okay so I hope you find this lesson interesting I have another poem I wish you to learn because this is ba the next poem will be the first ever poem every kid will know okay it is the most widely recited poem in the world in Chinese culture so that's why I want you to understand the poem and further appreciate it alright thank you very much for following my lesson and next one you'll be introduced more vocabulary with a poem alright I'll see you in the next video 谢谢再见